Well, hello everybody. Welcome to Blue Marble Science and welcome to episode one of construction of the Cavendish experiment. Y'all watch this. I've got the wood laid out on the workbench now. What I was able to find was two pieces of sapele. At the wood shop, they were both about 11 feet in length. So I had both of them cut in half just for transportation reasons. One piece is just slightly under 13 inches in width, and the other piece was about 12 inches in width. So the two on the right are the 13 inch pieces. So the two on the left are the 12 inch pieces. I need both 13 inch pieces and one of the 12s and just a little piece of the other 12 inch piece. So what I wanna do first, before I do anything else, is try to understand how flat this stuff is. Um, and how much work it's going to take to make it flat and true. These projects never work very well if you can't get the wood flat. Now one way we do that, and it's a really old-fashioned way of doing it, but is by is through the use of what we call winding sticks. I've got them sitting on one of the 12-inch boards right now. And basically all we have to do is just sight down those things to see how much twist the board has in it. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to pause the camera and I'm going to set it back up so that you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, that particular piece uh, that the winding sticks are sitting on is the worst twisted piece of the, of the whole bunch. So let's see what it looks like. Okay, now we're looking right over the top of this winding stick. If I move it out of the way, you'll see the other one in the distance. It's got a white piece on each end of it. Stick that back on there. I think right now I'm focused on that far one. Let me change the focus. Yeah, bring this near one back into focus. Like so. You can see that the left side of that far stick is higher than the right side is. So that board has got some twist in it. It's not terrible, but there's some twist there. Now let's try the one next to it. Let me reset everything. Okay, this is the 13-inch uh, board that was next to the one we just looked at. And you can see, let me change the focus again. I think that's pretty well focused on that back winding stick. Let's see if we can bring this front back into focus. Now I'll go back to the front, to the far winding stick again. And you can see there's not much twist in this one at all. Now this board being nice and flat, is almost enough material to make all of the sides of the enclosure. Those enclosure sides are 3.6 inches in width. So I can make three pieces, uh, three and three quarter inches or so in width to be uh, final sized a little bit later. And I've got plenty of material to do that with this 12 inch piece. So this is the one I think we're gonna start with. The next question is, does it have any bow in it? We know it's pretty flat twist-wise, but how much bow does it have? So let me reset the camera and we'll take a look at that. Well, that's a really nice piece of wood. That bench is dead flat. Uh, and I know that. I know that to be a fact. So that board is laying on it. It is perfectly flat all the way across. That's an excellent piece of wood to use for the side walls of this thing. So I think that's the piece we're going to start with. Now, while I can run a 13 inch wide piece of material through the thickness planer, I would actually prefer not to do that. I would rather do the more narrow pieces. So the first thing I want to do is rip this piece into three equal widths, or thereabouts equal. 
But before I do that, I need to have one straight edge. And we're gonna do that with the hand planes. So let me get this set up and I'll show you how we do that. Okay, I've got the wood mounted in my vise. So let me adjust the desk a little bit. Tighten that down so now it's nice and stable. Now I need to smooth the top of this thing out. Now hand planes come in a variety of sizes. Actually starts and Stanley uh, started this many, many years ago. I think he was the guy that actually numbered these things to begin with. He started with a number one and went all the way up to a number eight. Uh, and different uh, size planes are used for different purposes. Uh, a number five plane, and that's what this is right here. This is a number five. It's called a jack plane. It can be used for pretty much anything. You can use it for joining a piece of wood, making this nice and straight. We could also use it to smooth the surface of the wood. It does a lot of different things. But when you get into the larger planes, the longer ones, like a number seven, and that's what this big mono is right here. This is used pretty much for straightening out edges like this for doing uh, joining work. So let's see what we can do. First of all, let's just take a little check here. Get underneath this thing. Got a nice strip. It's aluminum. Okay, it's fairly flat. It's actually not too bad. Not too bad at all, but it's not smooth at all. And I know if I put the square on it, it's not square. You're not gonna probably not gonna be able to see that. But there's a big gap. This side over here is high. This side toward me. So let's see what we can do with this. A little bit low all the way back here on this back end, right under there. I don't want to do too much to that, that's just the very end of it. And we'll probably lose that anyway. Now let's see how we're doing square wise. So that's what I got to do to each piece. So with a nice straight edge planed on three of the four boards, I decided I would just leave them the full width and run them through the thickness planer. But before I did that, I wanted to make a quick sketch and make sure the pieces would fit on these three boards. And as you can see, it's no problem. We've planed a nice straight edge on three of the boards. And I changed my mind. I think I'm going to go ahead and thickness all three of these while they're still the full width. 
the planer can handle it, so why not? Now this is going to get loud. In fact, it's going to get so loud I doubt you're going to hear anything I'm saying. So first I'll turn on the dust collection. For anyone not familiar with what a thickness planer is, it's exactly what it says. It is a planer that thicknesses the wood for us by shaving off a little bit of the top surface uh, of the of the plank or the or the piece of wood that we put through it. So we run it through one side and then we flip it over and we run it through the other side and we keep alternating back and forth until we get the thing down to the thickness we like. In this case, we want it to be about three quarters of an inch, maybe a little bit more. So I don't feel like listening to that thing screaming in my ear anymore. Instead, I think we'll listen to Foggy Mountain Breakdown. Okay, we're finished with the planing operation, and this wood is absolutely beautiful. Uh, I have planed all this down to 0 0.76 inches thickness, so it's about uh, uh, 0.01 inches too thick at the moment, which is fine. I'll be uh, ending up taking that much off probably just uh, scraping and planing it so we'll end up right at nominal three quarters of an inch thickness but just have a look at the wood let me put this thing back on autofocus zoom back out a little bit over on the far side of the bench you can see what the what the wood looked like to begin with that's the piece that hasn't been planed. And then you see this uh, beautiful sapili after it's been run through the thickness planer. So, take this thing off of here before it falls. Now, the next thing will be to uh, start sizing this stuff. So I've got straight edges, true edges, this one edge, the far edge isn't. So the first thing I'll do is run this through the table saw, this edge against the, the rip fence, and I'll take off just only just as much as I have to take from that, that very far side to true it up. And then I'll move the rip fence over just a little bit and come back and take a pass off this side too uh, because that saw blade is absolutely true so there's where we're going next I finished pretty much all the work I can do with the table saw what I've done I took the first piece of wood which is all uh, its material is all going to be used in the side walls of the enclosure so all of that is exactly the same width. It is uh, 3.6 inches wide finished. So I was able to get three, uh, three and three quarter inch wide strips out of that one piece of uh, sapili. And uh, I clamped them together, put them in the vise, and then I've taken the uh, number five and a half plane you see sitting there and smooth those edges. Got them all exactly at the same level and got it perfectly straight with a straight edge and using the uh, machinist squares that are laying there. So the next operation is going to be to flip this over and do the same thing on the other side but this time we'll take it down to exactly 3.6 inches wide this is a really good way of doing this rather than trying to mess around with individual pieces. Just make all three of these identical and then whatever piece I cut out of it is exactly the same width as any other piece. So that saves us time in the long run. But 
that's where we're at with this part of it. Let me flip it over and do some more uh, hand planing. Be back shortly. You know, the one thing you guys are missing, and I really wish you could experience it, is the smell of this apelia. It's got a great aroma to it. Thought I'd do a little bit of planing for you. The planing operation worked just fine. I got all three of the boards exactly the right width, and everything looked good until I took the clamps off the three boards. And one of them, well, I'll tell you what, look for yourself. You know, wood can really be some aggravating stuff at times. This is one of those three pieces that we cut yesterday. So if I look at about the first 20 inches of this with the winding sticks, you can see how, how nice and flat that is. Zoom in a little bit. There you go. Looks good. What happens if I move the winding stick down to the other end? And wood will do this from time to time. This thing has developed just a hell of a twist. You can see how much higher that, that winding stick is on the left than it is on the right. So, that piece of wood has become effectively unusable. The other ones, the other two, cut from my exactly the same board right next door to this one are perfectly flat. They have no issue at all, but this one is twisted. Well, that's wood, never a dull moment. There was a happy ending. I was able to get enough material out of the other piece of lumber that we had and flatten it sufficiently to be able to make all of the pieces we need. So we're in good shape. Next, we need to cut these things to length and start making some joints. Hey, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Stay tuned. There's going to be a lot more of this. Don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons down there. I really appreciate you doing that. A special shout out to the patrons and to the folks that have directly contributed to this effort. I promise you, this would not be happening if it were not for you guys.